In this video, we'll discuss what determines the Gibbs energy of different phases of a chemical substance. So in the previous video, we looked at phase diagrams. We see that they're graphs as a function of pressure and temperature of what is the equilibrium or the lowest Gibbs energy phase for those given set of temperature and pressure variables. So we get a diagram like this where there are regions of single phases being the minimum Gibbs energy, regions where we have coexistence curves where two phases are equal in Gibbs energy to one another at the minimum, and things like the triple point where three phases are in equilibrium. So what is it that governs the shape and the qualitative features of this phase diagram? So if we look at the Gibbs energy, uh, the Gibbs energy change during some microscopic perturbation to our system, so dg, some infinitesimal change. We saw from previous videos that this is equal to minus sdt plus vdp, the Gibbs energy being a function of temperature, t, and pressure, p. So each phase has its own molar Gibbs energy. So dg bar alpha being the molar Gibbs energy of a given phase, Gibbs energy per mole of that substance in that phase. So dg bar alpha equals minus s bar alpha, the molar entropy of that phase at that temperature and pressure, times the change in temperature, plus v bar alpha. I should have v bar alpha down there. There we go, V bar alpha dp, where alpha just means solid, liquid, gas, or if you have any other additional phases, whatever those happen to be. Okay, so just as we did for the standard or for regular Gibbs energy, the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy of a phase with respect to temperature at constant pressure is equal to the negative molar entropy of that phase. And the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of that phase, if I put in alpha again, with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to the molar volume of that phase. So typically we have the following situation. The molar entropy of a gas is greater than the molar entropy of a liquid, which is greater than the molar entropy of a solid. So that makes sense if we think about it qualitatively. Solid atoms are condensed, they're fairly rigid, they can't flow past one another, they just have to stay in their location in the lattice and maybe vibrate a little bit. Liquid atoms are in a condensed fluid, so they can flow past one another, but they have to stay in pretty much a, a well-defined volume and don't move necessarily that much. Diffusion is much slower because they have to bump into a lot of particles, so more entropy and more freedom of motion than the solid, but less than the gas. The gas, by contrast, is pretty much free to move and take up the entire volume of its container. It rarely interacts with other particles and is free to explore the total space available to it. And then for our molar volumes, we see that typically the molar volume of a gas is much, much greater than that of liquid and solid. Gas will expand to take up whatever volume its container gives it. The molar volume of a liquid is, <clears throat> is much, much smaller and much more uh, constant with pressure. It doesn't change very much as you change the temperature or the pressure. And typically the molar volume of the solid is a little bit smaller than that of the liquid. One very notable exception to this example is ice or water ice. So liquid water at zero Celsius is is it has a bigger molar volume than uh, solid water at zero Celsius. All right, so if we take these facts and we plot some things out over here, if we plot the molar Gibbs energy of these phases versus temperature, we see that the derivative of this is, is relative to the negative molar entropy. So for a solid, it's going to have a slope which goes down slowly with temperature. For a liquid, it's going to have a slope which goes down quicker due to its bigger entropy. And for a gas, its entropy is much bigger, so it's going to go down much faster. So what happens here is at low temperatures, the solid has the lowest entropy, but eventually the liquid is decreasing faster and it becomes the equilibrium phase. And then you get to a point where it's decreasing even faster and we get the gas which crosses below them all. So this is why at large temperatures, 
uh, the gas tends to dominate. At intermediate temperatures, we might have liquid, and at low temperatures, we have a solid, all relating to the molar entropy of that phase. Where we have the crossover would be the fusion, temperature of fusion, the melting point between solid and liquid, and the crossover between liquid and gas being the vaporization temperature, the boiling point. And this kind of cross section I have here is this dotted cross section through the middle there. If I went down to a much lower pressure, then I wouldn't have the liquid phase at all. I'd just go straight from solid to gas, but it all depends uh, where, I, where I choose to be. Okay, alternatively, we can take a slice uh, at a given pre temperature versus pressure. So we'll plot the Gibbs energy of these phases versus pressure. So we see that the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy versus pressure is related to the molar volume. So the lowest, mo the biggest molar volume is the gas. So the gas is the equilibrium phase at low pressure. It's increasing faster than the other phases for its molar Gibbs energy. Then typically what we have is the liquid, which, de which is increasing slower due to a lower molar volume, and the solid increasing slower still. So what typically happens in phase diagrams is at high pressures we have solids, at low pressures we have gases, and at intermediate pressures we have liquids for a given temperature. Notice once again that if my, uh, if my temperature was below the triple point temperature, then I would have gone straight from gas to solid. So these are some of the ideas which govern the shape of our which govern the shape of our phase diagram, all determined by the uh, derivatives of the Gibbs energy of that phase versus temperature and pressure relating to the relative values of the molar entropy and the molar volume of the various phases.